Hi, Andrew Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the pathophysiology of inflammatory bowel diseases. Now, this includes two um, related but different diseases. One is called Crohn's disease, and the other is, of course, ulcerative colitis. Now, they seem to involve um, similar pathophysiologies in some ways, although they involve different tissues and different reactions within the tissues. So what do they have in common first? Well, we don't really understand the diseases very well, but we do we are sort of zeroing in on two um, major sort of categories of factors that are causing the disease and that is microbes and the other one is genetic factors and there we don't know specifically which genetic factors are involved but there are twin studies suggesting that there is a strong inherited component to um, inflammatory bowel disease. And how, which genes are involved? Well, the genes that seem to be, that we seem to have zeroed in on so far, are genes that are their polymorphisms, or variants relatively common variants of genes. Polymorphism, just to remind you of our, I think we talked about it in our genetics lecture, are variants of genes that occur in 1% of the population or more. So relatively common variations. So this is different than a rare mutation that would be much, much less than 1%. So polymorphisms that, that cause increased inflammation. Now microbes, we haven't really been able to zero in. I would not be surprised if in the next decade or two, we, similar to how we zeroed in on H. pylori for the stomach, if we discover a specific microbe or collection of microbes that directly cause either ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Um, as of yet, we don't know. There's been a number of candidates. Now one of the more interesting studies that I read in the last um, six months or so was a study about how um, people that are exposed to antibiotics, particularly children and teenagers, um, over the next 12 months have a much higher uh, predisposition to developing Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Now, this seems to be because we've disrupted normal flora, right? And this may allow, this may sort of selectively allow the growth of specific microbes. Um, that increase inflammation. So anyways, both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are a disease of inflammation of the mucosa of the bowel that appears to be caused by um, microbes and polymorphisms of gen genetic disease. Now, Crohn's disease and inflammatory bowel disease are both inflammatory diseases, but Crohn's disease is a disease that can sort of impact anywhere in the GI tract from, you know, the mouth all the way down through the stomach and the small bowel and the intestines all the way down to the rectum. Whereas ulcerative colitis is a disease that really um, always tends to start in the rectum and it can spread up the descending colon and the transverse colon and the descending colon and then it sort of stops there. Sometimes a little bit of inflammation from ulcerative colitis can spread into the distal ileum, but that seems to just be spread of sort of inflammatory molecules um, that wash in, sort of backwashing from the colon. So ulcerative colitis, hence the title, ulcerative colitis really just affects the colon. 
Now, Crohn's disease, on the other hand, can really affect everything from the mouth to the anus. There are three different possibilities, usually. There is, the most common is Crohn's disease that affects only the small bowel. And usually it affects the ileum preferentially. Then the other possibility is that the ulcerative colitis affects only the colon. And then the third is that it involves both. Now in rare situations, usually it's a disease that's involving both the colon and the small bowel. It can also involve the esophagus, the stomach, and even the mouth. So that's one difference between the two diseases. Now another difference between the disease is the way that the ulcers form. So with Crohn's disease, so with Crohn's disease we end up with inflammation that begins on the surface and can spread sort of down the crypts and quickly into deeper layers and it also can begin to ulcerate here let me it can ulcerate through various layers and it can actually ulcerate right through all layer of the all layers of the bowel even into the mesentery so there are times when you can actually have a perforation of the bowel because of this inflammation Okay, so Crohn's disease can involve the crypts, and it can also be transmural. And for this reason, because of, of the way that it can be transmural, it can cause um, some very serious problems including um, you can end up with significant scar tissue and fibrosis forming um, through various layers of the colon and this can lead to strictures. It can lead to perforations. And these things just don't occur um, often with ulcerative colitis. So with ulcerative colitis you end up with severe inflammation, but that inflammation politely remains on the surface. Now the the way that the inflammation occurs in uh, ulcerative colitis, it sort of opens, it erodes down into small blood vessels and it can lead to significant bleeding. And again this always, with ulcerative colitis, it tends to start in the rectum and then it slowly and steadily works its way upwards as the disease progresses. So major issues with ulcerative colitis are rectal bleeding. And it can actually lead to anemia. Now this the that's how the diseases are different. Now let's bring them back together again and talk about some symptoms that they have in common. They both commonly present with diarrhea and abdominal pain. And this is just due to, both of these are due to direct results of inflammation. Weight loss. And the weight loss may be in part due to food avoidance because of the pain. didn't finish writing pain here. So that can cause food avoidance, which can cause weight loss. And the weight loss may also be due to malabsorption because of the inflammation of the gastric mucosa interfering with absorption. And then because of the inflammation, it frequently causes fevers. Okay, so 
that basically shows you that um, the diseases you know share many things in common but um, I wanted to sort of differentiate them so um, hopefully you understand how they are similar and how they are different okay so that ends my discussion of inflammatory bowel diseases including Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis Please take a moment to provide feedback, and if you have any questions, as always, you're welcome to uh, ask a question in comments, and, and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want quick and easy access to my other uh, physiology videos, I will put some links below. Thank you very much.